All right, we can do it. So there we are. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at Photoshop and try to find ways to um, help you with the project 03. In that project, you have to use um, three different, uh, sorry, four different layers. And some students have told me, you know, I have enough with three. I, I'm fine with using a, a figure, a background, and maybe one more thing. So what do I do? So I explained that you can take two background images and blend them together. That means you take the top layers and you go under the blend mode. And you might say, look, I'm going to go with multiply because it's really cool. It creates this effect like if you notice in this, if you do multiply on the top layer, it looks like the bubbles that are up here now show up in the sky. So you have the sky that is very, very liquid, right, in a way. And the dolphins truly seem to be underneath the surface. So if you have two background images blended, sometimes you do achieve some really cool effect. But then another student of mine told me, OK, but what if um, this poster has to be a vertical poster? What if I have an horizontal image or a horizontal background image that I really like and I want to use? So I thought to myself, you know, I need to teach my students how to make uh, the, the, uh, the edge of this composition kind of disappear so I can put, for example, a solid color in the background. What I mean here is rich, achieve something like this, right? So I made a, if you look at this, these layers, I have a background layer at the very bottom. Like if I remove these two, I have a simple back, background layer. And then I have those two images that have, as you can see, masks. But they're not simple masks. They're, they're linear gradient masks. So, so how do I do that? First of all, as you can imagine, I'm going to un unlock the background because that's a really neat thing to do when you want to apply a mask or do anything to it. You don't want it locked. So what you want to do is you want to click on the mask layer, for example, on either one of these two. You might need different masks for each. So you click on this mask layer, and then you go in the gradient. And you'll notice that the gradient should be black and white. If it's not, please go under this little um, gear looking thing and choose reset tool right here. And it should go back to black and white. That is actually the default, by the way. So now, now that I have black and white, we know the meaning of black and white in Photoshop. Everywhere where I will put black in my mask, it will be blocked, will be removed, will be fading away, will be disappearing. Uh, pixel wise means those pixels will be gone. And everywhere where I have white, the pixel will be present. So let me take my gradient and click and drag toward the top. So sure enough, if you look at my mask, it shows you that the bottom part is white. So I can still see my dolphin that are at the bottom part. In fact, let me take this image out. You can barely see it, right? Now, I think I actually hit too much. So what I do is I generally click and drag a little bit more and play a little bit more until I get to the point like this is it. This is what I wanted. See, I actually angled it a little bit. I turned it a little bit like 45 degrees so that I can see the part where the dolphin are that is the part that I want to retain. But the top part of that layer where there are all those bubbles, you remember there were bubbles at the very top uh, right, are gone. So I'm going to do the same exact thing on this layer. I go in, I create a mask, and this time again, I decide what do I want. Generally here, you don't want to move too much. You want to move a little bit right there, but not too much of the image. So I'm going to actually play with it a little bit more until when I get what I want. It means, for example, I want some of those clouds to show up. Perfect. So now I have the dolphin and I have those clouds that I kind of like in there. You might decide that later on that the clouds would be better to make them disappear. But the only test is to add a layer to find out and then give it a background color. Before I do that, though, what I'm going to do is remember the original question to this demo was, how can I take this horizontal um, image and be actually part of a vertical image? So what I need to do is I need to do an image canvas size. I'm going to actually say I want it, the, the bottom part to be retained and what I want it to save and what I want it to be. I, you want these to be at the bottom, basically. So that's what you choose. And I'm going to say that I want, for example, my height, instead of being 10, let's say I want it to be 18 or 24, whatever you want it to be. Let's say 24. So this poster is roughly 
18 by 24. So as you can see now, is you know, taller, but I see all this checker that means it's transparent. It is not cool. So I'm going to add a layer, move it to the bottom, and I'm going to choose a blue color and do Alt or Option Delete that will fill it. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of a problem that is, do you remember when I told you those clouds there? We might regret that we have them because we might see too much of that layer. So what do you do? You go back to this layer, the top layer, and again, you go with your gradient, you target the mask, and kind of play with it until when you achieve something that looks, you know, like what you want. Maybe, and I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit more because zooming out is sometimes really help you when you click from the outside. There it is. So I clicked from the outside. I think I removed too much of that layer because now I see too much of the dolphins. So I'm gonna, I, the, depending how, how you click and drag, it will allow you to achieve a different effect. Another thing you might say is, okay, you know what? It doesn't work. In this, the linear doesn't work. So maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in the radio. And radio means I'm gonna click on here and click out and that element become the center of my composition. And the more you click, the further out you click, the bigger is that radius. So be aware that if you click too much, then you start seeing that line again. Is everybody with me? I heard someone asking question. So that's kind of what I did here. In the bottom uh, 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 layer, I created a linear gradient. In the top layer, I created a radial gradient. I, I created an overall tall poster. And at the moment, I just put a solid color in there. You could actually have another image in there. For example, a big island that is supported by a turtle shell. I don't know if you ever seen as part of a myth of this big, big turtle that carries a whole island on his, on his shell. So you could have that instead. Who knows what you can have. The third image, instead of being a solid color, the, the very bottom, the background, instead of being a solid color, could be another image. But in the meantime, you managed to use these two other images, the dolphin and the, the just the ocean with the clouds and the sky. You managed to somehow incorporate them into the a, a, a vertical poster. So that's kind of what I believe it would, would really help um, is to kind of think of uh, the vertical poster as something that could start from an horizontal as long as you're OK with obviously creating a composite. That means at the very top having another image, but the purpose of the project, the project three is to make a composite. So that's kind of like nailing it. Um, but this, this could help you. I think it would be a good technique um, to consider the using gradients within a mask will allow you to kind of create this kind of diffuse uh, disappearing of certain pixels instead of a clear cut um, uh, disappearing like we have been doing in the past with masks. Um, other things that you actually let me uh, stop this video and maybe start another one if if uh, um, we want to demo again stop sharing and stop 